All right, here is your coffee cake demo. So a lot of the steps are going to be very similar to how we made our muffins. So we're gonna be using the muffin method to get our cake mixture ready to go. Uh, and then you're gonna notice that we have a streusel topping that's very similar to our muffins where we're gonna use that biscuit method where we're gonna use our pastry cutter, knives, butter knives, or uh, some forks to cut in that cold butter. So same similar processes. We're gonna use a cake pan. So I have an eight by eight uh, cake pan that I'll use. And I'm gonna grease and flour this so my cake doesn't stick. Um, so you can use a pan like this. Um, you could also use a bigger pan. You might need to double your recipe if you use a bigger pan, but it's a nice small one. So it's nice and small. Um, it can be great for um, breakfast, coffee cake, like we've talked about in class, um, a nice delicate cake, a little on the sweet side, um, but also really great to have just with breakfast or with coffee, hence the name coffee cake. So the other thing that we've also talked about before is mise en place. So on my station here, I have a whole ton of mise en place. I've got um, bowls and some equipment. Uh, I've got lots of my ingredients, a few things that are even measured out here, and we'll get to them. Um, but mise en place, I've got things nice and organized and ready to go. Uh, so looking at my recipe, my first step here is to preheat my oven, 375 degrees. Okay, so now I am ready to get my pan uh, greased and floured. So with my ingredients here, uh, or my steps, sorry, my steps here, I'm going to preheat oven to 375. I'm going to grease and flour. Grease and flour an eight by eight pan. So what does that mean? I need to grease and flour it so that when I take my coffee cake out, my coffee cake is going to come out of the pan and not stick to the pan and um, be terrible and have like a, a crust that sticks to the pan. I want it to come out. So I just have some vegetable shortening here. There's lots of different ways that you could grease and flour your pan. So with the grease I'm using, like I said, I'm using vegetable oil. This just stays in my uh, cupboard and it's nice and soft. You could take a stick of butter, uh, if you have a stick of cold butter and rub that around. You could use pan spray. Pan spray is great if you have that ready to go. Um, you have some shortening, uh, maybe even a little vegetable oil you could also do as well. Um, so this is nice and soft for me. And you can tell it doesn't take a lot. But what I want to focus on doing, and I just have a paper towel here to kind of help protect my hands from just getting too greasy and slimy. But I want to coat the bottom, and then I'm also really focusing on getting the corners and the sides, because uh, I want to make sure this comes out. So you can't really even see it. You can see a little bit of a sheen on here, but the other thing that you're not seeing is you're not seeing this white shortening. You're not seeing chunks of shortening on here. Um, so if you use a pan spray, it'll get nice and thin, uh, but you aren't going to see big pools of it and big chunks of it. So then now it also said flour, so how do I do that? I'm just going to take a tablespoon of flour and get that in the pan. And I just want this flour now to stick to the grease I have in here. This is easily done just by kind of shaking the pan around. Again, trying to get the corners and the sides as best you can without making too big of a mess. But you can see I'm just kind of tapping it up, up against my other hand and just kind of gently shaking it. And I don't want to start with a whole bunch of flour. Like I said, I just did a tablespoon. And then you can see I've got a little extra left here. This is just going to go to the garbage can. Um, but this is just extra. So I want to just a tablespoon is fine or even just a shy of a tablespoon. You can always add more later. Um, but whatever I'm going to toss, I don't want to make a huge waste, right? So if I'm starting with a quarter cup, it's far too much. I'm going to throw a lot away. So just a little extra here. So now that I've tossed that, I've got a pan that's floured. But the other thing that you can notice here is that I have pockets of really, really white pieces here. Um, you can see this other side here is like a dusting, where here is just a really dark uh, white pocket of flour. I don't want that. Um, I can knock this down uh, gently on like the edge of my garbage can, or if I had a counter, maybe uh, protected with a paper towel. But I want to get that flour out of there so that when my finished cake comes out, I don't have a pocket of flour 
on a piece of my finished coffee cake because uh, then someone's just going to get a bite of some flour and it's not going to taste very good. So I'm just going to knock this out gently on something hard. Like I said, a countertop, maybe if you put a paper towel down. Um, I've got like a clean garbage here, so I'm just going to knock this gently. And that's all it takes. Uh, but just like it's just a gentle tap just to get those um, pockets knocked out of there. I don't see um, grease anymore. I see a dusted flour pan. That's exactly what I'm looking for here. So we'll set that aside and then now we can get our cake ready. So you'll notice that in our steps, uh, it says that using the muffin method we're going to use the muffin method to mix all of our wet ingredients and set aside. And then we're going to mix all of our dry ingredients, uh, create a well, pour our wet into the dry, and then we're going to mix just like we did with muffins. So wet ingredients, what do I got for wet ingredients? I have milk. So I have three quarters of a cup of milk, three quarters cup milk, um, I've obviously pre-measured this, but remembering that we're using a liquid measuring device, this is staying on the counter. I'm bringing my eyes down to it to make sure I have accurate measuring. I also have one egg. One egg I will crack into a separate container just to make sure my egg is good and ready, no shells. And then I also need a quarter cup of melted butter. So this is going to be a quarter cup of melted butter or four tablespoons. So you can see I have four chunks here. So to melt this, I'm just going to melt this easily in the microwave. Before I throw this in the microwave, uh, I am going to put a paper towel over it to kind of just help shield it. Uh, so that if it were to kind of spit and spatter, it's going to do that on top of the paper towel. I do not like cleaning the microwave. It's not a, uh, not a fun task, I think. So I want to prevent that mess if one were to happen. The other thing that I'm going to do to prevent messes is I'm going to uh, use my time wisely and do nice and gentle, slow times here. So again, we've talked a lot about adding more time later. With melting butter, go nice and slow and gentle little bits of increments of time uh, as you go and then check at it check at it if it looks like maybe it needs to use a little bit of stirring because it's really really soft stir it um, your container might get a little warm so even just the residual heat off your container might um, finish melting it so i'm gonna go melt this um, i turn my power if you hit the power button you can kind of see your microwave always hits uh, power 10 you can go lower um, but like i said i'm gonna start with maybe because this is really cold right out of the refrigerator um, if you had thought ahead and put it in the, um, on the counter, it was soft or room temperature, it won't take so long. But I'm going to start with 12 seconds, and then I'll probably do eight second increments after that. So I will be back with melted butter. Okay, I have got some melted butter. There's a couple small chunks here of my butter. But as I said, I've got um, a warm container. I've got other warm, like that chunk right here. But if I just give this a gentle stir, that extra warm um, butter that it's surrounded with, just give it a little time and it's going to melt just fine. So sometimes it just needs a little patience, a little encouraging, stirring it around and it'll melt. If you've got a little chunk like that, that little chunk is gonna be more, it's gonna be beneficial to just give it a quick stir and be patient versus putting this back in the microwave. If I were to put this back in the microwave, um, I'm probably going to end up with a, a butter explosion in my microwave. So like I said, just take a little time, stir it around. So with my wet ingredients, giving that a quick whisk, really focusing on just breaking up the egg yolk. And then now I can set that aside as well. And now I can focus on my dry ingredients. So my dry ingredients, I need some flour. My flour is going to be one and a half cups. 
one and a half cups of flour. Then I'm going to need uh, white granulated sugar. And that is going to be for three quarters of a cup. I mentioned in my blueberry muffin demo that the three quarters of a cup, if you don't have the cup that says three quarters, you can simply just take your quarter cup and measure it three times. One, two, Three. And you have the same as if you were to have this three quarters cup. I just did this three times. My baking powder. So again, paying attention to my proper uh, leavening agents here and it's baking powder. And I am going to need two and a half teaspoons. Two whole teaspoons. And a half teaspoon. My last dry ingredient will be salt. And that is half a teaspoon of salt. So mix together my dry ingredients, just like the muffin method. I'll push some of those ingredients over to the side. And then now I'm ready to incorporate my wet into my dry. Your steps on your recipe say make uh, or mix well with a uh, wooden spoon or a spatula. So I'm gonna use my spatula. That's going to work fine for me. I just don't wanna use that whisk. That whisk is gonna start to glob on to the end. Um, and I'm just gonna have an easier time with my spatula. The other thing to notice with your wet ingredients, don't be super alarmed if your butter looks like it's gonna start to kind of chunk up because it's just hanging out with this cold milk. So yes, we melted our butter and then we put it into a pan with some cold milk. If you set your milk out in half hour or so, let it get a little room temperature, it'd be better beneficial, but it's not going to harm anything. So if you notice that your wet ingredients are starting to look a little stiff, that's because you've added melted butter to your cold dairy product, your cold milk. Um, and when butter gets cold, it wants to seize up. It wants to get solid again. So don't be surprised if it looks a little solid on top. It will be just fine in here because it's really well dispersed. So now mixing this just gently, we've also talked about with our muffin method that we wanna mix until just incorporated. We don't have a mixer. We're not going to over mix, just gentle kind of folds to where I'm just kind of scraping the outside of the pan or the bowl here, and then scraping down through the middle, chasing around some of those flour chunks if I see them, but I'm not gonna be super picky about it. So as you can see, this batter is quite thick. Uh, if I had a whisk, it's going to glom onto the end of that whisk and make this a little bit more difficult. So since I already know it's going to be a bit thicker, I'm not even going to start with it. So, so I've got a nice thick batter here. So I'm ready to throw this into my floured, my greased and floured pan. My spatula is great for getting every last bit out of my bowl. Now I'm done with this bowl. It can go in the sink. So I want to try and get this batter gently into the corners and evenly throughout. 
uh, my pan. So I don't have any uh, corners that don't have a lot of dough in it. Again, it's tacky dough. It's kind of sticky. So it's sticking a lot to my spatula, sticking to my fingers. Uh, at this point, I'm going to get rid of this spatula. And then you can just use gentle tapping. I like to put a towel down just so I'm not constantly, tends to be kind of annoying. Uh, so if I put just a gentle towel down, a towel and just gently tap that, it fills the corners in just fine. It looks a little bit more level and even. And now we're good to go. We can start focusing on that streusel topping. Okay, for my topping, again, similar to our muffins that we made. I need brown sugar. For a third cup, one third cup of brown sugar. Remembering that we will gently pack this with our hands, nice and level, should pop right out. Flour for a quarter cup, one quarter cup flour. Cinnamon for half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then with that streusel topping, before I get my butter in, I want to use my pastry cutter to just mix this up so that when my butter gets in, all I have to do is focus on cutting my butter. I'm not trying to incorporate everything. It's just nice to give this a little pre-mix. Get my cinnamon spread throughout. And then now I'm ready to add three tablespoons. One, two, three of cold butter. using my pastry cutter to cut this butter in, leaving cold butter chunks. Scraping this down as it starts to get stuck to my pastry cutter. Okay, so now I have my finished streusel topping. So remembering that this is nice and crumbly. This isn't a dough, this isn't a cohesive mix here. It's crumbly, there's chunks of butter here. This is exactly what I wanna see. So before I bake, I'm ready to get my streusel topping on top of my coffee cake. A couple notes here. If you are making this ahead of time and you think coffee cake sounds super delicious in the morning, but you know what? I don't want to get up super early to bake it. I want to make it the night before and just pop it in the oven. You totally can. Um, but a couple tips to that is if you were to make this the night before, get your cake in this pan, plastic wrap it, get your streusel in a bowl, plastic wrap it. Don't add them the night before. Because what tends to happen is this is a little heavy and your streusel topping tends to kind of sink down and then your cake kind of swallows it up. Not terrible. It might be like a swirl of a streusel in there. I am more successful when I am putting this on, the streusel on right before it bakes. So whether it's I've made it the night before, I'm making it right now, um, I want to put this on right before I bake. 
Uh, the other thing that you could do is you could do layers. So you could maybe do half your dough, get some streusel topping in there, do the other half of your dough or your batter, and then get your streusel topping on top. So you could have kind of a, a layered effect. You could definitely do that. But when I get my topping on, I like to start in the edges and the corners just to make sure that every slice of this coffee cake is going to be delicious. And whoever gets the corner pieces um, is not lacking any cinnamon and sugar deliciousness that I want to make sure I've got even distribution of my streusel topping. And then the other reason for that is because this cake will start to rise. And if you've got some streusel topping that's a little heavier on one end, it will kind of swallow it up. So you want to be a little even with it. Uh, kind of give it a quick shake if you want to. Don't be too aggressive with it. But nice and even. It's hitting all corners here. Now I'm ready to go for the oven. So let's look back at our steps here. So I've gotten to the point where I mix with my wooden spoon or my spatula. I poured my batter into my prepared pan and then I used the biscuit method to get my topping done. So I mixed the brown sugar, flour and cinnamon in a small bowl, cut in cold butter so you have small pea sized chunks of fat. And then I pour the topping over the top of the batter into the pan. And then now my baking instructions. Again, these should sound familiar that my baking instructions are going to bake for 20 to 30 minutes, rotating halfway through. And then I can check with a toothpick when I am thinking that I'm done. A uh, good visual indication of when it's time to check with a toothpick is when this stops getting jiggly. Um, come and come back and show you when it's close, but if you shake the pan and it's a little jiggly, that's a good indicator it's not quite done. So once that cake has firmed up and it's nice and firm, that would be a good time to check with your toothpick and you check the toothpick when it comes out clean, you're good to go. So I will start with 10 minutes, rotate, do 10 more minutes and then see where we're at. All right. So that was two 10 minute uh, sessions in the oven. I rotated halfway through, but you can definitely see it's uh, loosey goosey here in the middle. It's still quite uh, raw. So you definitely want to have that gone before you even test with the toothpick. I can clearly see it needs more time. It's starting to brown a little on the edges, but that jiggly is what I'm talking about. We need to wait for that to go away before we can even think about testing with a toothpick. So I'm going to do be five more minutes and then I'll check it again. That was five minutes. It is clearly not ready still. So we're going to do an additional five minutes and see what's happening. All right. Things are looking a little better. Um, I, I can see I in. I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, it's looking a little jiggly. Um, but if we look at our recipe, my original bake time was for 20 to 30 minutes. So now I'm at the 30 minute mark. So I'm at that high end of what was recommended. Um, so I, like I said, I can see on my end just a little bit of jiggly kind of right over here. Oh, and now that I check it, it doesn't look so bad. Uh, nope, it's looking a little doughy. And some of those creases, there we go. I'm seeing some dough in that, some of those creases there. Like I said, jiggle it around just gently. You'll be able to see it. So. Since uh, the rest of this is starting to look firmed up and it's just a little undercooked here, I'm going to do maybe three minutes more and see where we're at. Three minutes later, and now I can also see if I see this close up, I can see that this is starting to get a little bit um, caramelized, looking a little brown here, whereas before it was a little jiggly um, and kind of underdone. So that bit that I was concerned about definitely looks a lot better now. And then as I check, around, I think I'm good to go. So I would let this cool, definitely, um, before I start cutting it or uh, trying to serve it. When I do cut it and serve it, I do like to go into nines. So I'll cut two rows here and then two rows here, and then I'll get nine pieces. And then you can use a spatula or fork um, to get that out. But because we floured and greased our pan, it should be able to pop right out. Um, and then you also just have a pan that's you don't have to scrub at, so hopefully nothing is stuck to it. Um, but now you have your coffee cake recipe, and then if you wish to or you're able to, maybe you can make coffee cake for a breakfast one day.